Hey, landlords. Thanks for watching again. My name is Paul Roulard, realtor, property manager, and landlord coach. Today's video, ODSP. You know why I'm doing it. If you're on our Facebook group, Landlord Help Ontario, just a couple days ago, somebody made a comment, and uh, there is about 60 somewhat comments right now of uh, landlords who are just going back and forth, back and forth. Some landlords are upset with other landlords, and it just created kind of a controversy here. So this is why I wanted to talk about uh, ODSP and whether or not landlords should rent to uh, these kind of tenants or not. Uh, but first, December 13th today, so if you have a tenant who still did not pay rent and you followed my video going back a couple weeks ago uh, about uh, N4s and non-payment of rents, then you probably would have already served it. So uh, by Monday, um, it's going to be the due date if you served it by the second or the third day of December. So you can go and do the L1 on uh, Monday or Tuesday. So very important. If you didn't get your rents, get that out. Also, Christmas is coming. Holidays is coming. You know, Christmas lights are on. The Christmas trees, they might have real trees. They might, you know, went into the forest and cut some trees down, brought it into their living room. Uh, they're going to start drying out. And you know what that means. Christmas lights on them, it's dangerous. Fires are happening. This is the season where most fires are happening right now. So follow my other video there. Go check your smoke alarms. Just check them out. Don't, you know, take the liability away from you and uh, you just want to make sure everyone is always safe and especially during this time right now the, the heat is on uh, It's cold out now, and it's just the most dangerous time of year for fires So let's go back to uh, ODSP should I rent to them? We have lots of experience with ODSP tenants <clears throat> and uh, There is a good there's some good and there's some bad and of course there is in every single situation and everything goes back to the screening process um, you know, I just put together a little quick to-do uh, list and also a little pros list and a little cons list so that way, you know, everyone kind of gets a full scope. You know, we have a lot of ideas. We're probably missing some items here too that you, that you think of and, you know, it's great if you give us feedback on these videos too and you send us some comments or inboxes or text messages or phone calls. You know, we're happy to hear from every single one of you landlords. Um, but uh, there is some great, great tenants out there on ODSP and there are some ones who change it all for everybody and make you know, our thoughts uh, more negative. But at the end of the day, no matter what, you have to screen every single tenant, whether they're on ODSP or not. And you know, that some of the, the tenants with the best of jobs are sometimes the worst of tenants. And sometimes these tenants who are on ODSP, uh, you know, they're really great tenants. Okay, so number one, no matter what, if you have a tenant who's high risk, go get a guarantor. You know, it's very simple. You can request that. Get a guarantor, even if they're on ODSP, if they're, if they're not. If they're a tenant and they're high risk and they don't make enough income every single year, or, or every single month, sorry, and uh, they don't get enough hours or who knows, they've only lived at their previous address for, you know, uh, you know a year. Um, go get a guarantor. So that's something that you can you can do and you can make that happen. So um, number two, a full screen. And this goes back to my video, uh, top five ways of finding a good tenant. So scroll back in the videos on YouTube and you'll find that video there. So it's important that you screen your tenants really, really, really good. Look for tenants uh, in that screening process if they lived at multiple addresses. So if they lived in many different addresses, who knows, maybe they're a problem and you know they're causing problems with other landlords. And also check the social media because that's important. If you have a tenant who is always home and commenting and posting, you can kind of see what kind of individual they are. So again, whether they're ODSP or not, it doesn't matter. You're doing that for every single tenant and it's up to you to find those red flags. Super, super, super important. Okay, so before I get into the pros and the cons now, I just want to tell you a really great story that I do have about a tenant of mine who is on ODSP and uh, this tenant's great and when this tenant first came in and they, they signed a lease on a property, you know, we were reluctant because we didn't know the individual, we didn't know who they were, we just had a name on paper, we had an application and we can see that the ODSP doesn't pay a lot of, of money every single month for them to cover their rents and to pay for their, their way of life. So to us, you know, I made that decision uh, very, very difficult. And I can tell you that uh, it was probably one of the best decisions that I've ever made as a landlord. It really was. So now I have a tenant who's been into uh, one of my buildings uh, for six years. And this tenant's great. Uh, they're very quiet, they keep to themselves. 
Uh, they're calling me if there's any problems, if there's anything loud or anything that I need to do or repair. Um, the garbage is always out, the, you know, uh, the place is always clean and there's really no issues and the rent is always paid. It's always, always, always paid. So that's just an awesome story and, and this tenant is on ODSP. So, you know, it's just a matter of screening those tenants. Have an interview. Interview them like you would if they were applying for a job opportunity. And we kind of do the exact same process here. So just make sure that you look at the whole book and not just the cover of it. Because there's a lot of things in between that we're missing. So that's my good story. Right? Uh, but there's so many bad stories too. And uh, the problem is, is, like I mentioned in my previous videos, is, you know, on social media and online, we only really hear about the bad things. No, really, landlords don't really go online and start posting about all the great things that are happening and all the rents they're collecting and, you know, all the great tenants who go and shovel the snow and clean up the yard. So we don't hear about those stories too much. Uh, we only hear about the bad things. So some of the pros, uh, direct pay. That's a huge bonus. Direct pay is awesome. It goes right into our bank account. It's done. Um, that's such a great, uh, great thing for us. But on the other hand, you know, the tenants can take that away at any moment. Uh, number two is there's a lot of people who really deserve ODSP and uh, they really deserve it. So we're helping people, you know. So if we have, you know, somebody who uh, needs help or different types of support, you know, we're really helping them and giving them a great shelter and a great place to live. And, you know, a, gig, a really good pro to this is just my, my story that I just told you a minute ago is I gave this individual a chance and they recognize that. And, you know, they remember that for the rest of their lives and they, they, man, they manage their situation very well and take care of the property. So, you know, with my experiences, um, the good ones who are really deserving of it are the ones who really take care of the property and you know they're out there and, and they want to work but they can't work so they volunteer they go and help the community and you know if they're not doing that and they're truly you know well des good deserving people they take care of your property and trust me with my experience they do so um, take that into consideration uh, another pro is a lot of them they don't want to move around often most people on ODSP they stick around they're not moving, you know, every year, every second year. They want to find something, uh, a property that is, is good for them. It's quiet. It's a nice place to live. It's a safe place to live. And if they have that, they're not going to move. They're going to stay there. And that is awesome. Going back to my really good story is I never had a turnover in that unit for the past six years. How awesome is that? On average, uh, we're getting turnovers every one or two years, and that is very expensive because we have a vacant unit, and it could stay vacant for two months, for three months. And not only that, we have to get cleaning crews in there. We probably got to do some painting. We probably got to fix up the floors. So there is some work involved there. So again, a really, really great pro to renting to a tenant who is on ODSP is that they might stay there for a very long time. So that's pretty awesome, and to me, that's such a great thing. Uh, another pro is they all have caseworkers. So if there's ever an issue or ever a problem or you know a communication uh, problem there, they always have a caseworker. We have a direct phone number we can call them and discuss it with them. And a lot of times they're pretty quick to answer that phone, and uh, you know they're eager to help you because they want to help uh, that individual as well. Okay, so some cons. Uh, Direct pay, going back to the direct pay again, it's such a great thing, but it's a bad thing too. And that's because if they can remove that at any time and they can cancel that direct pay. So, um, you know, that sticks in the back of your mind every single time because if they stop that, then your rent is not being paid. And that goes into my next con is if that rent is not paid or they do damages, what do you do next? I mean, can you take them to court? Can you sue them? Can, you know, what can you get out of them? And that is a very big issue uh, that a lot of us landlords, you know, it, it sticks, you know, back there. And we don't want to rent to tenants on ODSP because of that. Um, so that could be an issue. Again, it all comes down to screening your tenants. So if you do the proper screening and the proper interviews, you might be able to decode them and figure out whether they are deserving um, ODSP recipients or not. Uh, Honestly, landlords, I would love to hear from you. I want to hear your opinion on this, uh, what you think about, um, you know, taking the court and, and getting action. I know that a lot of your landlords are probably just going to type back really quickly and say, don't do it, or you're not going to get anything out of them. But honestly, I want to hear 
from somebody who has done that and uh, you know what you had to go through and, and what kind of judgments that you did get if you got any and I'm really curious about that and I'm sure other landlords who are thinking you know should I rent to them should I not should I um, it would be good for you to hear those stories too um, and uh, another con is sometimes uh, if they're non-deserving ODSP recipients they're home all the time and they don't want to work and they don't want to get out there and get involved in the community and help out other people um, so the non-deserving ODSP recipients uh, are the most dangerous ones and we have to uncover if they are this kind of individual or not in our whole screening process because these are the ones that are home all the time um, they could be smoking in their units all the time whatever they're doing um, that's up to them but if they're disturbing other tenants and causing problems then our other tenants are going to want to move out of these properties too if they're multi-units and not only that is uh, they're not uh, I mean there's going to be more wear and tear on the property and when they do move out there's going to be expensive repairs uh, so that's pretty much it for this video um, again I'd love to hear from all of you landlords if you have any questions concerns if you have any stories yourself I really love to hear some good stories because I do believe that people deserve a chance and that's something that I've always believed in from the moment that I've ever started this business uh, I've always given people a chance and I always love to hear their story because if it's on paper and I see it and it seems like a risk I still want to see I want to I want to see I want to kind of decode it um, so I'd love to hear all of your stories I've heard too many bad, bad ones, so give me some good ones, okay, landlords? Uh, again, my name is Paul Roulard. I'm a landlord coach. I'm a realtor and a property manager. We have some really neat stuff for landlords. We're on rolling some, some really uh, creative things here. Uh, so if you're a landlord, you need some help. Uh, yesterday, I got a couple of calls from landlords from uh, uh, different parts of Ontario who needed help. Um, we're driving them all into the right direction and helping them. So get in touch with us because we're here to help you. Landlords, you can run this business yourself and that's why we're doing this and there's a lot more to come. So thanks again, appreciate it and happy landlording everybody.